Hey guys, what's up? This is Dark Torian, and today I want to talk about um, getting into WoW. As we all uh, all know right now, um, you can pre-purchase Warlords of Draenor, and you're getting a free level 90. Okay, this guide, this this video I'm making right now is based on um, if you never have played an MMO or if you never have played World of Warcraft and what is this game about how are you going to make the right choices um, I bought the game right now uh, I pre-purchased uh, Wallace of Draenor uh, I'm getting a free level 90 uh, but I uh, never played World of Warcraft before because um, the leveling always is what is uh, keeping me away from the game I hate leveling don't like it but now I'm getting this Insta free level 90 and I'm gonna give it a try uh, and we all want to new, if you're a new player and also if you're uh, an old player coming back then you already know what if you're a player who's coming back you already know uh, the ropes of the game but if you're new to World of Warcraft because this free level 90 so you can insta catch up with your friends the question is like you, you want that to be a positive experience and not like I just wasted a level 90 on a class I'm gonna hate you know I'm gonna I pick the wrong char or whatever I don't like this is gonna be a negative influence on you and you're gonna drop out of WoW or whatever so um, before people are getting to me like um, this is not a real guide or uh, we already know this shit or whatever yeah I know this is meant for the people who are new to World of Warcraft uh, or who are new to an MMO now the first question is what is an MMO RPG? It's really simple. It's a, it's a massive multiplayer online role playing game. Okay, that's basically what it is. And that means that your this game is set up to play with other players. Your um the things that you can do things solo, but uh, most of the game around 70 to 80% is balanced about uh, doing things with other people this that's what this game is about it's not like a multiplayer shooter you just run around no you team up you work as a team even if it's a five man a ten man or a 25 man group you have to team up and um, there are characters in here with different roles different abilities and that's the whole role-playing game it's like what are which role are you picking to be in that group so that's an MMORPG it's massive multiplayer so playing with a lot of other people playing together um, so first things first um, this is what you get when you log in uh, I think most people know it if you're new to it uh, to World of Warcraft you don't know it and you can see there are a lot of different realms okay I want to go over that really quickly we have normal realms PvP realms we have role-playing realms uh, role-playing and uh, role-playing PvP okay let's get to it Normal and PvP. Let's get that first. Well, in World of Warcraft, you have two uh, factions: the Alliance and the Horde, and that also translate in service. All these names on the left side, like here, realm name, that doesn't mean anything. Okay, the names are just uh, some are from bosses, some are from dungeons and storyline of World of Warcraft. There's a big big massive storyline throughout the game there are multiple stories even I'm not a lore specialist um, but there are some people who know everything about it it's all there in the game if you look for it um, the ones that are green is because I have characters on that okay so that's why they're green um, basically when you're getting your first jar everything will be yellow the names don't mean a thing don't worry about that type though is a really different and um, because we have alliance and horde sides um, that means that there is also PvP um, that's also called player versus player okay the thing is like you're getting a level 90 let's say you bought you pre pre uh, purchase Warlords Drenner and you're getting that free level 90 and you're going somewhere on an, if, let's say you're an alliance on a normal server wherever you go except into the Horde main cities, but wherever you go, you're safe. Okay? If you're an Alliance guy, a Horde guy on a normal server cannot attack you. Very simple. You can also not attack that player. So you can't kill each other, so you can do your quest or whatever you, uh, whatever you want to do 
with uh, no stress. Uh, you don't have to be afraid that somebody's going to sneak up on you and beat the living crap out of you. Then we have player versus player, aka PvP. This works the other way around, okay? Here, player versus player is allowed all over the world, which has uh, good and it has good things and bad things. Player versus player. Um, this means that if you're an alliance guy and a horde guy runs into you and he wants to kill you, he's uh, he's going to be able to wherever you're gonna go, wherever you're gonna run. If he can catch up to you, he can smash you to pieces. Really, really simple. He can kill you. He actually gets points for that called honor points. Um, the good thing is you can beat him back. He just can. Uh, you can beat the living crap out of him as well. But uh, as an all, it's, it's not. I'm. I'm not against PvP uh, realms. Uh, especially all my characters are on PvP realms um, on servers. Um, sometimes it can be a negative thing because, uh, like, you get your first level 90 and then you starting another chart because you want to see more of the game, or you skipped all the leveling content and you're about, oh, I just want to see it. Got my level 90 now. Um, got him geared up. Uh, I need something to do with my time, so I'm gonna level another charge just to try it out. If you're in a bad situation, if you're having bad luck, you're gonna be level 30 and some level 90 douchebag. And trust me, they're there, seriously. So you're level 30 with your alliance, mates, whatever. And some level 90 is gonna drop down from the sky on his flying mount, gonna drop down, gonna beat you uh, to death because he can one shot you, just one blow you dead. Um, and they can, we call that ganking, and that can happen when you're questing or when you're doing your daily quests, which are there at level 90. So that can, if you really cannot stand being ganked or getting killed a couple of times by the other faction, if it really pisses you off, you shouldn't play PvP. On the other side, if you pre uh what if Draenor just locked to your level 90 and just beat the crap out of him back, I mean, it's really easy. Um, it's not a big thing for me, normal or PvP service. I have my characters on PvP uh, realms, but I've I really don't care. It's just it's just how it worked out. Um, my friends went to uh, these servers, and I just tagged along ba basically, and that's how I get these characters over there. Um, so then we have RP. What is RP? RP is role playing. Um, role playing servers are a bit more serious about the lore and about the character you play and there are um, there are really uh, there, there are some people and there are some guilds I'm not gonna say in general but there are some guilds who are really deep into um, lore into um, lore is a storyline and wow so they're actually uh, they uh, talk like an if, if you let's say class and you're speaking class you, if you don't know what a class is don't worry about it but they're I'm um, saying the paladin uh, basically everybody who ever played Diablo knows what the paladin is you run into people on this role-playing service who actually dress up their paladin you know you, you can uh, transmog gear nowadays so you can make your character look any way you want so to make it an exact copy uh, of, of what in their eyes is a paladin and they talk like it they really are getting really deep into the character um, and working that way uh, there are actually I've been in been in some role-playing situation that people actually um, when they were trying to kill a, a boss in World of Warcraft and it didn't work out they would scream on uh, any voice comment I think it was Ventrilo back then or TeamSpeak 2 I don't I'm not sure but they were screaming like, I'm getting burned by fire, I'm dying, and all that kind of shit is going going around. There are guilds, not, not everybody, but it's there, you know. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, if you really want to live in a fantasy world and you really want to get in there, role-playing um, could be your thing. It's not my thing. <laughs> I don't have any characters on that. It's not for me, but I'm not here to judge. Uh, because, after all, it's, it's it's that kind of game. World of Warcraft has that side of them. And those players um, can tell you a lot about the story about WoW. And also teach you a lot of uh, stuff. So, it's not... I'm not negative about it. But it's a whole different playing uh, than on uh, normal or PvP servers. Um, Role-playing PvP, it's the same, you know. Uh, 
Role-playing is like role-playing only on the normal server and role-playing PvP is uh, role-playing only then with the role PvP on. Okay, so we got to that. So we have right now, uh, then we have the last thing right now. I explain now what the types are. We have populations. Okay, let's, uh, there we go. Populations of server. What does this mean? Um, here is where things are this is an important choice for you to make seriously if you want to get in if you heard about world of warcraft if you heard about your friend saying hey we raid i'm in a raiding guild i'm i'm in a 10 man team or in a 25 man team and i'm killing bosses and getting epic loot and that's what you want if you want to get in that if you know what raiding is you should um, this is where the big stuff is happening i'm right now the population is kind of a little bit of dwelling, it's because it's I'm kind of recording this late. Uh, normally my server that is Frostmain, where is Frostmain? Frostmain, normally I'm on a high, uh, yeah, on a high server, but everybody locked off for the night, so nobody here anymore. Um, but we have full service and full, uh, full high and medium and low, those are the servers you got. On a full server, um, you got it's it's up to the maximum. I think the maximum about the server is like ten or twenty. I think it's twenty thousand people. Ten uh, ten thousand on each side. I could be wrong. Could be even more. These servers that are full are packed with players and guilds. You know, guilds is like any clan. If you ever played like Battlefield, uh, got clans. Uh, Quake got them. Um, well, World of Warcraft does as well. Call. Uh, we're calling them uh, guilds. If you played Guild Wars 2, you know what a clan or a guild is. Basically, everybody knows the term, so I'm not going to explain it. But these are packed with guilds and players. The upper and the good side from uh, from this is that if you want to do group stuff, it's really really easy to find players. It's really easier to find guilds. But your queue time is going through the roof. I've actually been on one uh, on these servers, like you can see, and I've run into the problem that um, I wanted to do a dungeon with four of my friends, and it said eleven. Um, when we tried to get in, and this when uh, this was during Wrath Lisking release, in the first two weeks, first three weeks, it was like we tried to get into a dungeon and said your number, your number eleven thousand in queue. And you had to wait like four or five hours to actually get in the, uh, to that dungeon. Uh, right now, the queue times are, are sometimes about three to four hours. I'm not joking. Even higher. It sometimes it goes up to five, six hours to get into a uh, looking for it and get into the dungeon, because all those players, those thousands and thousands of players, want to get in as well. Um, right now, because it's late, there are no medium of uh, no high servers up, but. I know my server uh, Frostmain, which uh, contains my high level characters, is normally um, during daytime is a high server. Okay, um, because it's late, there's nobody. Uh, there are less player, players are online, so it skill da uh, skills down. High servers, and you will see them um, in the list. Those are the servers you want to get into. High servers still have a lot of players, but not too much. Queue takes about maximum an hour, and I've seen it. I had like once, twice, or three times. Um, mostly, it's about 30 to 45 minutes. You get into a raid. Uh, dungeons uh, queue is going even faster, about 20-25 minutes. And there is still loads of guilds on Frostmain or on any high um, server. It's kind of bad. It's not up right now, uh, so I can show you. But on the high servers where you want to be, a lot of players. Still a lot of guilds, but not that much that's going to screw you over. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Then you have medium, which is like the half of, of high. Um, it's kind of... Well, eh, when I'm on a medium realm, and I'm not, even though it says so, it's kind of dead to me. It's really quiet, um, and it's hard to set up things. It's hard to do group things, because there are not a lot of, uh, not a lot of players online. Um, so yeah, it's not for me. 
And then right now we don't have any. You also have low realms. And those realms are dying. There's almost nobody up there. And if you get up there. If you're getting on a low or medium server. You have a chance to run out of possibilities. Run out of guilds you like. Or guilds that are doing the things you want. And you're stuck. So I would really recommend. Uh, to go to a high server. Um, it's too bad I can't show you. Oh well. If you're. Um, German. French, Spanish, Russian, or Italian, you can also go to um, servers like right here. Uh, do we have high servers here? No. Um, German and French. If you're German, you can go pick German servers. Okay, instead of English, you're going to German and you can pick a German server where everybody speaks German. Uh, French, same way, Spanish, Russian, and Italian. If you're none of those countries, I'm sorry. Uh, then we have an English. These are all the English realms which are obvi uh, obvious the most. Okay, so we talked about what's what, we talked about what's an M uh, MMORPG, and we talked about servers. Okay, let's get started. Um, I want to show you guys a couple of things uh, because right now is the choice for all of you guys is like if you're gonna create a new character I'm kinda looking right now because most of my stuff is this this realm, my main realm is full still going to get there ok, there we go uh, let's see, can I create a character? no I can't, ok so I'm going to go to another realm gonna pick one Deathwing uh, let's go over here these are some alts uh, let's see if I create a new character. Here we go. Okay, this is what I was talking about. We got alliance and we got horde. Okay, there you go, alliance, horde. Those are the two factions I was talking about about the PvP and normal stuff. And we have the Pandaren. Um, and when you level through the Pandaren starting area, when you reach level ten, you can pick. If you want to go Alliance or if you want to go Horde. But you have to complete the whole um, storyline. It doesn't take that long. Level 10, level 13, something like that. It takes you about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It's okay. Um, so, basically they're saying like Alliance are the good guys and Horde are the bad guys. It's not that black and white. Both, uh, both the Alliance and the Horde have a massive storyline. Which eats with their own story. Right now, the leader of the Horde is the bad guy, but that's just this expansion we had. Um, it's not like if you pick Horde, you're a bad character, or if you're Alliance, you're a good character. Both sides have their own storylines and their own uh, wrongs and rights. It's just what you prefer most. Uh, it's basically... But you're gonna be starting in some... Uh, the Horde is almost in one side of uh, the world starting area and the alliance on the other side of the world is kinda it's not entirely like that but yeah pick um, alliance or horde is like pick whatever you want if you want to be an orc why should I convince you to be alliance I mean there's no reason not to be okay pick whatever side you like whatever you like if you like to be a badass cow yeah why not Pick whatever you like, guys. Horde or Alliance, doesn't matter. Okay, it's not going to influence you that much. Um, what you should look into is class. Okay, there are a lot of classes. Let's see what we got here. One, I think we got eleven classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, well, eleven classes. Okay, and we talked about roles. What's a role? Okay, um, and here's where things get tricky. Because what should you play? If you never have played an MMO, if you don't know what's, what an MMO is, um, what should you roll with? What what should you pick from this entire list? What From this list, what suits you? What is your kind of game style? Now, before everybody's getting and uh, saying, pick a druid because he can play four ways. I'm going to go over the ways right now. We have... Tank roll, and tank is one I'm gonna explain later on. But we have melee and range and healing, and um, it's kind of hard to explain if you don't, if you never played WoW. It's kind of hard for me to explain. Okay, melee is this. This is melee. Being a warrior, being up, 
close and personal, smashing things to pieces with uh, weapons. One-handed weapons, two-handed weapons. Um, this is what is what is a melee, okay? A melee guy is up close and personal at the boss, um, beating the crap out of him, okay? Imagine a big, big-ass boss. You will be standing behind the boss mostly of the time, if that is possible, and beat the crap out of it with your weapons, okay? Uh, with your big two-handed weapons or one-handed weapons, whatever is best for you, okay? That's how melee works. Then we have range classes, okay? We have the hunter, who's a special range class, because it's the only one who is using a bow or a gun to be ranged, okay? He shoots from a distance, okay? So if you have, instead of uh, being behind the boss, that boss is going to be over here, and with your hunter, you're gonna be wanting to stand over here at maximum range, just in range to um, do your damage because it's like 30 or 40 yards, and you can stand away from the boss. That's where you want to be, you know, away from the melee, away from all the crowdiness over there. You want to pick your spot, pick your safe spot where you feel comfortable, when you can look over the raid and uh, keep up your rotation, um, that's your attacks, and just do damage from a large distance, okay? That's what is range. Keep as much um, distance between you and the boss to do your damage. We have um, other classes who are uh, range are like mage, who is like it's like a wizard. This is kind of the first thing that pops in my mind. Is being a wizard is using magical damage. It's also being at max range, just like a hunter. Only the hunter is the only one who's using a gun or a bow. Is the only one using a, actually a weapon to fire off. A mage. Or warlock are using magic spells. They're not gonna wave around with their stuff. They're just gonna cast with their hands and getting that shit, uh, shit done. It's also the same with Draenei can go shaman, which is um, he is, shaman has three things, but he can also be something like a mage. Okay. Also, I have the priest, who's also um, who can be a ranged uh, a ranged person. But they're using magic, okay? Only the hunter is using a weapon. So, there are three things you have to ask yourself. Um, do I want to be a damage dealer? Do I want to be a tank? And do I want to be a healer? Now, the first thing I want to point out that if you're new to uh, World of Warcraft, I think, in my opinion, you should stay away from tanking and healing because you first need to learn the game. But I can say this, but you guys don't. If you're absolutely new, you don't have a clue what's, what is tanking and what's healing. So, going to get back, going to change my realm, going to uh, Frostmane. There we go. Okay, log in. Uh, there we go, Paladin. Okay, this is my prop pala. Okay, being a tank, this is his tank setup. It's not about doing damage. It's it's about surviving. That's why he's carrying a shield and a one-handed weapon. Okay, I'm gonna enter the world. I'm not gonna tank a dungeon for you because this makes this guy uh, this guy really really long. If I would do all that kind of shit, but okay. Tanking is not about. Um, it's not about doing damage. Damage doesn't mean that much, seriously. Tanking is about uh, to keep threat. Okay, we got like paladins got increases your threat uh, generation. It's called righteous fury. So what do we want to do? Okay, let's let's say this is a boss. Okay, and I'm the tank. My job is to make sure that this boss right here, if this is a boss. Or you can see this is a, a group of mobs, a group of boards, or whatever we're attacking. If I'm with a party, with and the party consists out one tank, one healer, and uh, three DPS. That's a five man, and ten man is basically three healers, uh, five DPS, two tanks. I want to make sure that the boss is hitting me, 
That's the, that's what this aggro is called uh, is all about. I want to make sure this guy stays attacking me because if it doesn't attack me as a tank, it's going to the healer. It's going to kill him. It's going to kill the guys who are doing damage, like a hunter or a mage, and we're all dead. And I because World of Warcraft is based around um, working together as a team. So as a tank, de and dealing damage? No damage. Uh, I'm calling it DPS. DPS is basically the short term for doing uh, for damage. That's not my job. My job as a tank is to make sure that a boss is targeting me and hitting me. Okay, he has to stay on me. If I'm not doing this correctly, a DPS can um, over aggro me. I will show you really quickly how that works. Because we got something that's called threat, and I disabled all add-ons so you don't see my personal UE and saying Jesus Christ, this is one complicated game because it's not. But let me omen. It's sacred to tanks. This is people don't agree with me. Too bad for them. This is what you have as a tank. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna set it up. This is an add-on, and you. Uh, there we go, Omen. Ah, oh, so bad, it's not showing. Okay, normally when I'm attacking a boss, I have a threat. That threat appears here on my screen. It's gonna show me how, I'm, how much threat I'm doing. If I'm doing a bad job, it's really easy. A, a damage dealer can over aggro me, that's how we call it. He can build up more threat than I can, which will result in the boss Aiming at him, going to hit him, and if you're a damage dealer, and you're not a tank, and you're over aggroing your tank, you're, you're getting the threat because your tank is bad, you're gonna get one or two shots, you're gonna die, and your healer can't prevent that. And then, your whole group is going to die. So tanking comes with a lot of responsibility, I don't want to scare you away, absolutely not, but if you're new to the game, um, and then you're already like, what is he talking about right now? Right, I am talking about being a tank is having responsibility. I have to pick up a boss. If I'm doing a five man thing, I have to make sure that everything in the dungeon is hitting me. I have to make sure that whatever, uh, what I, uh, what I'm going to attack, that I'm making sure that I'm not um, getting too much. Um, uh, not too much uh, mobs on me, not, not too much uh, trash, we call it trash, it's, it's the mobs before the boss. You don't want to get too much of them, otherwise your healer's going to have a bad time or whatever. So if you're new to the game, I would not suggest rolling a tank, because there's a lot of responsibility coming with, uh, with this. And there's a lot of uh, positioning, you have to know how to position the boss, you have to know a lot about the tactics, about when, uh, if you're tanking with two tanks, when to take over and not. It's more for the advanced player, so I would not suggest rolling a tank if you're new to World of Warcraft. If you have played other games, if you know what tanking is, go ahead, pick that tanking class or lo loads of it. Okay, let's log out for a minute. So I would not suggest that. I'm going to change realm again. So, tanking characters um, are the warrior, the paladin. A warrior Paladin, Death Knight, and the Druid. Those are classes able of thinking. Not to worry, all of them have DPS specs, damage specs. Okay? So, here we go. Every class has three specs. Specs are talent trees we can pick up. On a monk, by the way. Warrior. Paladin, Monk, Death Knight, and Druid. So we've got five classes right now as a tanking class. Okay, those can tank, but they also can all do can uh, do damage. Don't worry about it. Just pick whatever you like. If you want to be a damage class, any class you see here. If you want to be damage, you can roll any class you want. But I'll get to that in a minute. So we have talent trees. Those are three specs. I'm gonna uh, show you again. Let's log back. Oh, it's just. Uh, where is my? There we go. 
So I have three specs. Uh, let's have a good example. Let's pick the mage. Mage is a good example. Okay, this is my mage. There we go. Okay, specs. Those are specializations. Like, this is a mage. This is the caster. And now I can, I can show you the caster right now. So you have seen a tank in action. And this is a range DPS being in action. Okay, this is what I'm doing as as a mage, as a range DPS. This is what I'm supposed to do. Doing my uh, damage from um, maximum range being in this spot. This is where I want to be. This is my comfort zone, okay? So, this is a range class, okay? And if you roll like a mage, you have three different specs. Three different playstyles. Okay, I have fire and frost because uh, frost is right now one of the best rating specs. It's actually the best. Uh, unless you have really high gear, you can go arcane. And I have fire as well spec just because I want to change my playstyle now and then. Um, so we have three different playstyles where we can choose from. Like for a mage, all three are damage. Arcane is damage, fire is damage, frost is damage. Really, really simple. Okay? It's just slightly different change uh, playstyle. So Paladin. Let's go back to the beloved Paladin. Here we go, here we go, here we go. You have more specializations. You have a tank. Retribution, that is being the melee. And we have Holy, which is being a healer. I'll get to that in a sec. There we go. Uh, DPS gear. I don't have it with me. What the hell? Yeah, I do have. No, I don't. What the? Oh no, I don't have it. But um, DPS. Uh, I don't have. I should do this with a two-handed weapon. Uh, I don't have one equipped right now. It's on my other character. Wait, I'll show you. But this is. It has a holy tree. Holy is about healing. Protection is about thinking. And retribution is about damage. Uh, damage. It says so. Okay, so you can roll um, what you want. This makes it a very versatile character, okay? You can pick whatever you like. Um, the only thing is you're not arranged. Okay, but Retribution is a really good DPS spec. Protection is a fine tanking spec. And Holy is really strong right now as a healer. But, like I was talking about the tank, you know, the, the tank has to tank that boss, has to... Um, make sure the boss is hitting him you can't survive that without having a healer on you so the moment you got a healer as a healer you have that big responsibility um, you have that big big responsibility of keeping the tank alive and keeping well in the five-man group keeping the tank alive and uh, healing the other three people in the ten-man raid you're gonna have a lot more to do. You have two tanks, you're gonna have five DPS uh, as a healer, you have to heal a lot. Healing is also really responsible using your abilities uh, at the right moment and um, if you screw up as a healer, your party or your raid, you know, your 10-man group is going to die. And that's because you didn't do your job right. The same with tanking. So there's, if you're new to the game, I would not suggest to roll a tank or a healer. If you are a guy who says, well, I'm kind of good at games, I manage uh, things really quickly, I would suggest you pick something up like a paladin, of like a warrior, um, who can tank and DPS, and like a paladin can tank heal and DPS, can do all three. So you can pick whatever you like, okay? You can start out... Um, what you want, you can always you can always change. You know, you're like mm, DPSing. It's kind of boring. It's not kind of my thing. I want. Uh, I like that uh, responsibility. I really like tanking. I think I can do it. Then you don't have to level another char. It's a uh, possibility. You've seen a range. You've seen a tank. I'm gonna swap over really quick to show you what a real melee is. The warrior. It's, it's one of the. This is really what people get into melee. Uh, this is really. Uh, this is what most people, um, this is the common picture you get of being on melee. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Going to the dummies again. This is being on melee. You've seen me cast on my mates, you've seen me tank on my, um, 
Paladin, and this is being a melee DPS. Okay, and basically, when you're doing this, you're gonna stand behind the boss. Imagine this is a big ass boss, and you're gonna be here. You're gonna right behind it, doing your damage abilities. So, now you have seen the melee, the range, the tank, and um, yeah, that's about it. So you have seen all three: melee, DPS, prod, of the AKA tank, and you have seen a range DPS, my mage. Okay. So what do I suggest if you're new to the game? What would I suggest to you to roll? What should you roll as uh, as a new player? Um, oh. Really, really simple. I suggest you roll a range DPS, and um, the reason for that is really simple. If you're gonna start a new character, you want to have. Um, if you want to learn the game, you're new to the game. Okay, I'm making this guide because you're new. You just got into it. You want to learn the game. A range DPS, like I showed you, my mates. You can DPS. You can do your damage from really far away. It gives you a really good insight into the game. Okay, you can clearly see what is my tank doing. How is he tanking this boss, and why? You can figure it out. You can all look at it when you're DPSing. Hey, why is this guy doing this? He's tanking it like that, putting it in that position. And he's thinking that boss like that. And then you can also see like, hey, my healers are standing over there and doing doing this. And the warriors, the melee DPSs are standing right there at the boss doing that. So, being a ranged DPS, you have a very clear look over the entire thing. Whatever you do, if you're doing dungeons or raids or uh, player versus player, you have a big view you can you don't have to chase anything you don't have uh you're not standing behind some big boss who is obscuring your view even though you can zoom out your camera you always have that boss in your face as a tank or as a melee dps uh as a ranged dps you can really learn the game um i was a mage during uh, when i started out playing uh i played in some really hardcore guilds during the burning crusade and i learned so much being a mage helped me really to understand the game, to really learn the game. What is a ranged DPS supposed to do? Um, you learn your, uh, to position yourself, but that's also your ranged DPS. If you're a mage, it's also the same position as a hunter, but also the same position for a healer. So you're uh, when you're being a, a ranged DPS, you're also learning, hey, where should I move, where should I go as a healer? But you also have a really clear sight on what is the tank doing and where is the melee standing. So you're getting this information, this learning and understanding about the game really, really easy. So when I was like, uh, when I was done of playing a mage, I wanted to do something else, and I've uh, I've been uh, I've did really good on my mage. I was it's still one of the best characters in game uh, so far. I think it's really, really fun class. I've rolled to. Uh, to a tank and why because I've seen my tanks playing it and I understood it I understood the way of positioning and I understood my job as a tank I saw what why what is the tank doing and why uh, is it important and why is it important the way he does it I only learned that from doing damage on a boss and watching my raid in action wa uh, watching my tank doing their job I also learned about threat because as a mage I don't want the boss to uh, attack me because I'm gonna one hit from a boss and I die so you're learning a lot from being a ranged DPS and you're also seeing what your healers are doing and where they are positioning themselves so you're picking up a lot from the game now, if you're new to the game, um, there are like there are a lot of range classes. Like I said, we have the rogue, we have the shadow priest, we have the shaman, the mage, the warlock, and the druid. In my opinion, in my opinion, if you're getting, uh, doesn't matter if you get a, fr a new level 90, a free level 90, or if you're gonna level one from one level one to level 90, there are two classes for me standing out which you should start with. That is the mage, and that's the hunter. And it's not because I started out with a mage, definitely uh, definitely not. I would really suggest the hunter over the mage. Because if you're going to level, the hunter is ownage. 
Okay, the hunter is so freakingly easy to uh, to level with. It's ridiculous. This pet that you get, you can tame different, uh, a lot of different pets, which is really fun to collect and to have. But they tank for you. So when you're leveling and questing in this game, um, I have a tank. My my pet, my wolf will tank for me, and I can just lay back, do my damage. Kill the, the boars I need, or kill the scorpions, or spiders I need to kill, whatever I need to do, doesn't matter. He will attack them, make sure the spider or the boar will attack him, and you can just lay back and do your damage and kill it. Also, on max level, level 90, and also on level 100, don't worry about, uh, about it guys. Um, this is a really good chart to learn to rate with, okay? It's absolutely, if you want this, uh, if you're getting to level 90 and later on to level 100 and you're really like, I want to get into uh, into rating, I want to be a good raider, I want to be able to do good damage, a hunter is really not difficult to learn. It's the same with a mage. Like, you saw the buttons on, on the mage, it's the same with the hunter. It doesn't have a lot of bu uh, buttons and it's not really, it's not really, really uh, complicated to learn. A hunter is really easy to master. It has the same with the mage, three DPS specs, three damage specs. So a hunter does not heal or does not tank. Only his pet can tank, but not a, not a raid boss, so don't worry. So, and the thing is, the same with the mage is all three specs are different playstyles, but um, if you master frost, you can also master fire and arcane as a, as a mage. Hunter has beast mastery, survival, and marksman. The playstyles are a little bit different, but they're th all three really equal to monster. If you can play survival and um, in the next expansion marksman becomes a thing, you ha will have no problems learning that because it's really easy to learn it. It's basically the same. Um, some sh I think right now the uh, the difference between survive uh, the survival spec and the um, marksman spec is like um, one. It's one or two shots are, are different. Well, they have different names, but they're kind of the same ability. So you're really gonna understand it really, really quick. I just I got a level 90 hunter, and I just played all three specs just to try it out. And I was like, okay, what's doing? Um, I never played marksman. I played survival and beast mastery, and I was curious to marksman uh, last week. I was like, let's give it a try. So I tried out the spec marksman. I was like, okay, hey, this is how this is working. I was, I was like five minutes playing. I was like, okay, I get this. I played survival. It's really easy. It's just kind of the same and still different. Still gives you a little bit of different feeling. Um, you're gonna have some. Uh, and it's, it's nice. It's really, it's nice to play. There is some diversity, and it's easy to master. And that's why I don't recommend Warlock. Warlock has also like three different damage packs, but they're so different that when you right now we have a fire spec which is really easy to play, it's not being the top DP, uh, the top damage pack. If you're raiding, your guild all, always wants you to have the best damage uh, talents, the uh, best from all three damage choices. They want to say, hey, right now. Uh, the fire spec for Warlocks is the best, so the Warlocks will spec fire. If in the next expansion of patch, um, Bliss is going to change that, and you're going to play the one of the other two, you're going to get screwed, because they're... Like, Warlock has now that fire spec, which is basically like the fire mage I showed you. It's also equally the same. It's a ranged cast, so it, it's the same fire, fire stuff. That's really fun to play with a Warlock. I love the war, uh, Warlock right now. But, if I have to go to the other spec, Affliction... I will hate the Warlock, because Affliction is really about timing, it's really precise, you really have to be on your toes, you really have to know your class so inside out, and you have to be watching timers, you have to be really focused on it, that this is more for advanced players, so I would not recommend it to you if you're new to the game, if you have played other MMOs, or whatever, you have. if you have a lot of gaming experience in that kind of stuff, and being good with timers and watching all that kind of stuff, go ahead for it. But those three specs, the three damage specs this Warlock and the Warlock class have, are all three completely different. So, let's say you're starting out with Fire, then you have to go Affliction, and then you have to go Demonology, and then again, ah, I just mastered Affliction, ah, damn, I need to go Demonology, and then it's again completely different, and you have to master something again. Why, and... 
if you compare that to a hunter mage, you're like, okay, I need to switch to from uh, fighter frost, no worries. You just change your spec and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is how it works, I get this, let's roll, let's go raid. You're not stressful, you understand, because it's the basic mechanics of the class with a little bit different uh, li little bit different abilities, and still it's fun, guys. Still a hunter or a mage is fun. If you're going to level from 1 to 90, if you want to have a good time, pick a hunter, seriously. It's really, really fun. Um, if you want to get into reading, if you're new, pick a hunter or a mage. My personal um, experience, that is going to be the best way to learn about the game. And once you have been reading, once you have seen stuff, then you have a clear view of, hey, I understand what a tank is doing, uh, I might want to try tanking as well. And then you can look in, or you're seeing, hey, I see what the um, league guys are doing, that warrior with two-handed axes, which I showed you, that's really looking awesome, and I understand now. I've I've seen them in action, so I know where to go and how where to be. So then, once you understand it from a range perspective, it's really easy because, as a range, it's really easy to learn how to position you, yourself, what to do at a boss fight, and when you and a melee is a little bit different. It's a little bit more hustle. You're in a crowd. There's a boss blocking your uh, view. Your tanks are there. There are some other melee. It's a little bit more crowded. It's a bit, it's a little bit more obscure in, and there are more players in your screen. While when in range you have more reds, you can also find a spot for yourself. Like, I don't want to stand in the crowd and if it's not needed, I'm going to just swap to the side. So, I'm going to stand 10 yards away from everybody so we can have a clear view of what's going on. And that's your that's the advantage as, as a range. Okay? That's why you should in my opinion, roll range. And the most easy ranged classes are a hunter and a mage to begin with. Okay, those are really easy to master. And what easy, you're not being a noob because um, you can do shitloads of damage with these characters. Seriously, they can own. And uh, later on, you're getting, uh, if you're getting into raiding, doing 10 and 25 man stuff, you have like damage meters. Don't worry, you can own the world with a mage or a hunter. Seriously, don't worry, you're gonna be good. Attribute to your guild. Every guild, all guilds are always looking for a hunter or mages because they're uh, really viable for your raid. They really bring good DPS and good abilities, which every guild wants. So that's my suggestion. And after that, when you have done your raiding, when you have learned the game, you can always level in another char, pick up a tank, a healer, a melee DPS, whatever. But if you're starting, if you're new, guys, trust me on my word, I've played this game for uh, almost 9 years now, I have have all 11 classes, trust me on this one, I've done a lot of hardcore raiding, start out with a hunter or a mage, and when you like that, then you can try to look around for your next choice. Okay guys, um, thanks for watching, I hope this uh, helped, uh, you can also, uh, there's lots more to find on the World of Warcraft side, and there are, I'm sure there are other guys, uh, guides around. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you like this one. If you like this one, please uh, feel free uh, feel free to subscribe on my channel, guys, because there's gonna be a lot of more content coming uh, coming out. If you're also curious about some more classes um, as a new player, I've made some guides about level nine uh, ninety charts about their rules and whatever. You can also check that out too. Um, there's a mage guide and uh, some tanking guides and whatnot, some healing guides. So if you want to have some in-depth look about healing, tanking, DPSing. Pick one of those guys. So you uh, guys, so you got a clear view. They're on my channel, so you can see actually what's going on and what's important for them. Okay. Right, thanks for watching, and have a good one, guys. Goodbye.